Now we're going to talk about the conjugate zeros theorem. Some textbooks may call it the conjugate pairs theorem. If the polynomial P has real coefficients, and if the complex number A plus BI is a zero of P, then its complex conjugate A minus BI is also a zero. Now notice there is the condition that B is not equal to zero. That is because if B is zero, we do not have a complex number. Well, we have a complex number. It's just um, a real number. It's not very exciting. It doesn't have an imaginary part. Okay. So we're going to find a polynomial with integer coefficients that has degree 4 and zeros 2 minus i and 1. And the 1 is a zero of multiplicity 2. Now remember, if we have a degree 4, polynomial of degree 4, there will be four zeros. So my zeros, I'm going to list out everything. I want to list four zeros out. So I have 1, but it has multiplicity 2, so I'm going to write it twice. And I now will also have the zero 2 minus i. This theorem right above, the conjugate zeros theorem, tells me that if 2 minus i is a zero, so is its conjugate. What is the conjugate? 2 plus i. Okay, so this is also a zero by the conjugate. zeros theorem. Okay? So we want a polynomial that has integer coefficients and these four zeros. So my polynomial looks like a times all of these factors. Remember if these are the zeros, my factors are x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2 minus i, and x minus 2 plus i. So all of the factors. So if I want to write my polynomial, I just multiply all these factors together, and I'm also multiplying by a. This is x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2 minus i times x minus 2 plus i. And why do I have that a? Because if I factor this polynomial and there's a constant right here, to set the polynomial equal to zero, I set every term equal to zero. But a constant will never be equal to zero unless it already is zero, so it doesn't really matter what um, I have here. If x equals one, the whole polynomial is zero, it doesn't matter what a is. Okay. So now I'm going to clean it up a little bit. P of x is a times x minus one, times x minus one, or x minus one squared. I'll go ahead and leave it like this. And then I have x minus, I'm going to distribute this negative sign, x minus 2 plus i, oops, plus i, and then x minus 2 minus i. I'm going to do a couple of things here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that if I have x minus 1 squared, if I have a minus b squared, that is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So these two terms combine to give me x squared minus 2ab, so 2 times x times 1, so minus 2x plus 1. Okay, that's that part. And now look at this part. I want you to look at x minus 2 and x minus 2, and then I want you to look at, let me use this green one I guess, the i's. Do you notice anything? Do you see that this is a difference of two squares? If I have a plus b, b times a minus b, that is a squared minus b squared, do you see that x minus 2 is my a, my i is my b? So I have a plus b, a minus b. Save you a lot of time if you recognize that. So I'm going to take a and I'm going to square it. So what is a? a is x minus 2, and I'm going to square it. Then put a minus sign. Then I'm going to take b, and I'm going to square it. What is b? i squared. So far, so good? Recall, i squared is negative 1. So let me color code this for you just a second. That became this part. And the green part is the i's. So I have p of x equals a 
times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to expand this out using this um, up here. X, a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So x squared minus 2x times 2, so minus 4x plus 4 minus i squared is negative 1, so minus negative 1. So p of x is a times x squared minus 2x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x. Notice right here I have a minus and negative 1. This part right here is a plus 1. So minus 4x plus 5. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to take every single term in the second polynomial and multiply by x squared. Then take every term in the second polynomial and multiply by negative 2x. And then every one by positive 1. So this is a times x squared times x squared is x to the fourth x squared times negative 4x is minus 4x cubed. x squared times 5 is plus 5x squared. Now I'm going to take every term in the back and multiply by negative 2x. So negative 2x times x squared is negative 2x cubed. I'm kind of lining things up so um, I can combine them very easily. Negative 2x times negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 x times x is x squared. And then I have negative 2x plus a positive five, times a positive 5, that's negative 10x. Then I have 1 times x squared, that's x squared. 1 times negative 4x is minus 4x. And 1 times 5 is plus 5. Again, I didn't do anything different. Instead of just writing out a long, big line, I chose to line up my terms so I can combine them very easily in this step. So p of x is a times x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus, okay, what do we have here? 8 plus 5 is 13 plus 1 is 14x squared minus 14x plus 5. And that is, um, this is a whole bunch of polynomials that have degree 4 and those zeros. If I want something specific, I let A be anything I want it to be. That's it.